What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Matthew Putterman. I'm here with MyMMAnews.com. I am here with Austin Liu. Austin, how are you doing today, man? I'm doing great, bro. Thank you for having me. Of course, man. Well, my first question is, tell the, tell the people a little bit about yourself. So my name is uh, Austin Liu. I'm a professional MMA fighter from Fresno, California. Uh, I'm currently 0-2 right now. I'm a little bit, you know, I'm trying, I'm on the come up right now. I've had a rough, you know, first two fights, but, you know, I think this year for a lot of people, it really made people, you know, look within themselves and be introspective and kind of, you know, look to the future with optimism rather than uh, pessimism. Definitely. I was watching some of your fights and, and I'm doing, of course, a highlight for you as well, too. And it just feel like you have that swagger. You have that, that kind of that it factor in you. Obviously, yeah. like a lot of the guys want to shoot on you because you're a tight. Ta- it looks like you're a taekwondo based, and a yes, lot of guys want to yeah. shoot on you. And I was watching <laughs> fights, and I'm like, man, these guys don't want to strike with you, but uh, your, your strikes hey, look no way, look no way. So, yeah, yeah, man, it looked impressive to me. So Thank obviously, really starting off, going, yeah, man, starting off going to there's a lot of guys that start off not really great right away because you have a few amateur yeah, fights doing well on the amateur circuit, and then you go up, and then just the competition, the level, it's just a little different. You're getting paid instead of not getting paid for amateurs. So, I mean, that you're, you're going to, you're impressing me a lot with your, your stand up, and I'm sure your game has evolved since those two losses. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. I would be a fool to not, you know, work on the things that have, you know, caused me to have some losses or some hiccups on the way. But, you know, with that being said, like going forward, you know, I'm really looking forward to, you know, making these first two performances of mine, like a, almost like a defining moment, like a turning point, I should say, a turning point, you know, like, I think um, when I turned professional, a lot of things changed for me, you know, when I was amateur, I was, you know, how, how can I explain it? Like, when I was professional, when I was amateur, I was fighting with, like, almost like I had nothing to lose, you know, like, every fight, I would go in there, like, fearless, almost, you know, and then when I became professional, like, just because of that, you know, name change, just because of, you know, just a few differences between amateur and professional, it really put, like, a hundred times more pressure on me and I put a lot more pressure on myself too and I think because of that too you know I wasn't able to let loose and perform in those in those fights so you know going forward like having this whole year to just not fight and you know just focus on training and focus on myself focus on you know my mental focus on you know just other things and being able to take a small break I think that's going to help me in the long run because now when I come back I'm going to be hungry I'm already hungry now I mean I've been hungry the whole year but you know what I mean so I'm looking forward to it Definitely. You know, how did you like get into fighting? So when I was, man, when I was a young kid, I mean, probably like five or six years old, I would watch Jackie Chan movies, Bruce Lee movies. My dad was a huge fan of Bruce Lee and he actually did Taekwondo um, growing up as well. He got his black belt when he was, you know, around like 16 years old. So naturally, you know, I was super drawn to martial arts from a, very, from a very young age so I would watch you know like I said like Jackie Chan movies Bruce Lee movies like any old like um martial art movies like that I would always watch them so by the time I was seven years old my dad's like okay like we're gonna put you in like karate or taekwondo or something and then he ended up putting me in taekwondo because that's what he did before so I did taekwondo for you know some time I lived in Tracy California at the time I actually trained at a gym called uh, Studio Kicks I'm not sure if it's still there in Tracy but the, they've changed the name um, a few times over the years, but I trained there. I moved to Fresno in junior high. Fresno and Clovis, um, these are like one of the most comp- competitive wrestling cities like in the whole United States. So I picked up wrestling like by the time I was in eighth grade, I did it through my junior year of high school. My senior year of high school, I did strictly Muay Thai. And then, you know, I really, you know, I had always taken a loving towards striking a lot more than grappling. I mean, my, my grappling has come a long way, but, you know, striking always holds a special place in my heart. But that's that, how I got started. That's that's a that's a crazy story, man. I, that's that's really good. I like that story too. So I mean, what what is your biggest attribute as being a fighter too? Of course, like your stand up is very good. Uh, like what is what stands out to you the most out of your your skill set? To myself, to myself, yeah. what stands out? Yeah. Ooh, I mean, I don't think I'm giving too much away. I think I have some pretty. I ha- I think I have some pretty hard leg kicks. I have a good spinning back kick. I mean, I would say mainly my kicks are the biggest. You know. Uh, one of the biggest tools in my arsenal, I also really, really like to counter-strike people, like a pressure, like a pressure uh, counter-strike type of um, fighter. You know, like I like to move forward, let them throw, and then I'm going to counter off what they throw. I like to do that. You know, I like to I like to keep it standing, you know, honestly. Like, I don't think I've attempted to take down, you know, like once in my career. And 
moving forward, I mean, people have told me, like, you know, like, you're an MMA fighter, you can shoot for these takedowns, you know, you could, you could have out wrestled this guy, you could have out grappled this guy. But I mean, at the end of the day, like, I don't want to, I don't want to gain fans just, just winning fights. I, I want to be known as the most entertaining guy. I want to be known as the guy that goes out there, he lays it all on the line, and he's there for blood, you know, I don't want to be the guy that's just going in there, just trying to get, you know, trying to win competitions. I'm not trying to win competitions. I'm trying to win a fight. I'm trying to win a war. We are like modern day gladiators in this, you know, modern arena. I want to go in there and, you know, have my name go down in history. I don't want to, I don't want to skim by, you know, that's all. Definitely. You know, what motivates you more coming off a loss or coming off of a win? You know, from, from a fighter's perspective, I give it, I give you guys a lot of credit and a lot of respect because obviously I train for fun, but I would never want to step in and fight specifically yeah. in the case, anything like that. And uh, what what motivates you more off when coming off a win or a loss? I would say honestly neither. I think what motivates me the most in this career is just um, just recognition and just like seeing my future. Like I believe very strongly in the law of attraction, and I think like just manifesting my future and just seeing the things that I want to have in the future, seeing the life I want to have, seeing you know just basically the envisioning the life I want to have in the future. That's what motivates me most. Whether I lose, whether I win, like. I know no matter what, I still have to keep moving forward. Even when I do lose, you know, like I, I always reflect on my losses. I always watch back the tape. Like, even if it is painful to watch, like you have to watch, you have to see where your mistakes were made. That way, when I move forward, you know, I can, I can use the past as an experience, as a learning experience, rather than looking back on it, you know, emotionally with a sour taste in my mouth, you know, like when I look back on my old fights, it's not, I look back on it, like disconnected from myself in a way. Like I look back on it, like that was me at a point in time, but that's no longer me. Like that, you know, that was however many years ago, that was however many months ago. Like since then, you know, I've been training, of course. So every time you step in the cage, you're a different version of yourself. And that's the crazy thing about fighting. You know, we train, you know, months on end for months on end just to be in the cage for that 15 minutes. And based on that 15 minutes, you know, the whole world, you know, that hundreds of thousands of people are judging you based on that 15 minutes. But there's immense pressure when you're in that cage. I mean, I think the reason I love it too is because it scares me, you know, like there's no more powerful feeling than being in that cage and there is no more, you know, vulnerable feeling than being in that cage. You know, when the spotlight is on you, you're like, wow, I'm, you know, I'm awesome. I'm powerful. Like I'm in here. Like, you know, we're gladiators. Like I said, but at the same time, you're like, wow, I can, you know, the name of the game is to mess each other up in here. So, you know, I could, I could definitely get messed up too. Definitely. You know, what? when would your next fight be? Because obviously with everything with COVID going on, I know you're yeah. in California and California is one of the, the hot spots for coronavirus right yeah, now. It is, yeah. uh, praying that you and your family stay healthy out there. I know it's probably really tough out there right now. But yeah. when is your ideal? Do you have anything on the horizon at all? or? I don't have anything on the horizon right now. You know, um, I mean, you you basically answered it too. It's very hard for me to get fights out here right now. I mean, I've been I've been training this whole time. I've been like you know, looking around, keeping my eyes open, uh, keeping my ears, you know, I, there hasn't been like too much that I've seen, but I have talked to, um, a striking coach down here in Fresno and he was saying that, um, they are having a lot of lion fights like coming up and stuff like that. So I have actually been considering also taking a kickboxing fight, like in the meantime, cause I mean, I am itching to compete. I'm in good shape this whole, you know, the whole 2020 year, because I wasn't able to, um, to get a fight. I was like, you know what? Like if I can't, if I can't get a fight, I'm just going to work on things that will help me once I get back in the cage, like working on my jiu-jitsu, working on my conditioning. That's something that I really, really focused on. I bought myself a whoop. I bought myself a polar strap. I really like listen to the numbers. I really have started working on my sleep a lot more, you know, not going to bed at super late hours of the night and then like waking up with like four hours of sleep and then trying to train off that. I've been really working on, you know, all aspects of my game, but, um, Sorry, what was your question again? I, I probably skipped over it. Oh, no, you're I, I was just like, when would you want to fight well, next? Fights, yeah. Ideally, yeah, ideally as soon as possible, of course. Ideally as soon as possible. I mean, I'm even, like I said, I'm even looking towards other um, other rule sets, like kickboxing and stuff like that, because I do want to still get in there. I still want to feel that intensity. I still want to feel that, you know, because when you're competing, the timing is totally different from, you know, training, from sparring. You know, you and your partner are not trying to hurt each other, but you know, when you get into the ring, you get into the cage, it's totally different. And, you know, I want to, I want to make some more money on the side, you know, while I'm waiting. Definitely. Well, would you, what, what job do you want, you do on the side of, except fighting, of course, what do you, what do you do for your main so job right, for right now? Of course. I'm pretty fortunate. So right now, um, 
to, just to stay afloat, like this whole 2020 year, I'm actually part of a trading group called uh, SMD Trading. I want to shout them out, SMD Trading. I've been with them since um, maybe like a year and a half ago when they first started. It's basically just like a small Discord group, just a bunch of guys. Like they um, they basically advise you on, it's, a tra it's an options trading group. So they kind of advise you on what trades to make, uh, what stocks to invest in. It's like, it's a whole stock, like a stock market type of thing. But I've been doing that on the side. I do that like Monday through Friday. Like I try to, I try to trade, you know, like pretty much every day of the week. I wake up at like 6.30 a.m., take a few trades, then just get off. You know, I try not to stay on there too long. I've been doing that. I do uh, sneaker reselling. I was doing the console reselling for a little bit too. Grab some PlayStations, grab some Xboxes, uh, doing like personal lessons here in Fresno too, like boxing, kickboxing, stuff like that. But basically doing anything I could to, you know, just make money on the side. Doing anything to where I have, you know, my time freedom, you know, time to spend time with my daughter, my girlfriend, just... You know, not being restricted to a, you know, a time schedule because I hate, I don't know what it is about me. But I just hate like, uh, you know, having schedules, you know, like I like to be free. I like to, you know, do things spontaneously. I like to do things on the fly. Definitely. That's awesome. I did get the Xbox, by the way. I waited outside for five and a half hours for it. So yeah, <laughs> you got to get With some that. Twitter monitors and some Discord monitors and they will, they will like, they will tweet your phone when stuff restocks. So that's what happens for me. Aww. So I mean, I could be on the Skype call with you right now, and if I get a notification, I could just click on it. Boom. Okay, like they're in stock. I'll just add to cart and then check out. That is crazy. All that for a game system, you know? <laughs> All that, yeah. I mean, because people are, you know, making money, like, you know, everyone's $200, out. 300 profit on everyone's each console. Yeah, everyone's at home, working from home. Like, people want to take a break, lunch break. They can play Xbox, PS4. You know, that's it's what a... I'm saying, yeah, that's what I'm saying, but they don't know about PC. Happen. No one ever thought that was going to happen, so... No, they really didn't, yeah. <laughs> It's kind of well, like, you know, the whole last year was, you know, basically, uh, it was basically a movie. I mean, like, it's definitely going to go down in history books. I mean, it's kind of crazy to think that we, you know, as young adults are living through history right now, and we're going to be telling our kids in the future, like, yeah, I lived through that. And it was, you know, it was a crazy time. I never thought I'd be wearing a mask in the church or anything like that. It's just weird going to the oh, store, know, yeah. wearing a mask. You see everyone else wearing a mask. It's just it's not ideal. I mean, it's not ideal, working yeah. out the mask. You know, it feels like you're wearing one of those training masks, but... Oh, yeah, at the gym. Yeah, that really bothers me, too. When I go to, like, normal gyms and I got to wear a mask, it's like, you know, I can't... You can't breathe the same, but uh, yeah. it is kind of... It, it's crazy. I mean, like, it's like a new way of our life, you know? Like, you have to have, like, a mask. Like, I, I get out of my car all the time and, like, try to go to a store, go to a restaurant. And I'm like, oh, man, I forgot my mask. I got to go back, you know? Like, oh. it's just, it's like, it's like you got to have your mask, your keys now. You got to have your wallet. You got to have your phone. Like, there's so many things, like, you know, I'm always forgetting. <laughs> no, for sure. You know, are you still your shows? Are you still training at Team Alpha Male as well too? This year, I wasn't. I wasn't actually training there, um, just because I usually go there when I have a camp coming up, because I have to pay money to uh, like live in the fighter house and train there and whatnot. Yeah. But since I didn't have a fight coming up, I only go there when I have a fight coming up. So I stayed home in Fresno. I just trained with some local teams over here. I trained a little bit at um, Halo Jiu Jitsu. I trained at uh, Clovis Elite Team, uh, like just small, small time like Jiu Jitsu gyms and stuff like that. Just making sure I get my reps in, get my training in, get my sparring in and stuff like that, just so I can stay fresh. Definitely. You know, what, uh, what, for fighting specifically, why do you fight? Like, what, is, there, is there something in you that's like, I got to show the world this is my gift that God gave me? Or what is it about fighting that really just attracted you the most? Wow, that's that's a deep question. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's almost like an open-ended question. Like, I don't know how to fully answer that. But I will say there are many things that motivate me to fight and made me want to fight. I would say the earliest inspiration for me to fight was definitely Bruce Lee. Like, to me, you know, a lot of kids growing up, you know, their, their, their heroes are, you know, Batman, Superman. Like, they look up to those people, right? For me, as a kid growing up, like, the first heroes I was introduced to were real-life people, you know, like Bruce Lee and Jackie Chan. Growing up, those were my heroes. I was like, wow, I want to be just like them because those people... They actually have the skills, like they're actually defeating bad guys, you know, like they don't have superpowers. They only have their training. That's their superpower. So I think that was one of the first things that really motivated me. Like, wow, I want to be, I want to be a superhero like them, you know, I want to be powerful. I want to be uh, somebody that has like these crazy skills, you know, like these ninja skills. But I would say that, I would say, of course, recognition, you know, like, and just achievement, like the whole challenge of fighting. It's, it's definitely the hardest thing I've ever done in my life, you know, like, Harder, you know, harder than, you know, forcing myself to go to college, you know, like fighting is harder than definitely harder than anything I've done. Like there's so many facets of it. There's there's training, there's nutrition, there's the, you know, the dieting, there's the weight cutting, there's the uh, 
the mental capacity for it, like trying to, you know, stay composed when you're in that cage. There's a physical aspect of it. I would say that. I would say, you know, I, I think I have what it takes, you know. I think I would, um, in 40 years, 30 years, like, if I looked back at myself and I didn't give this my all, if I didn't give this a shot, you know, I would be very regretful in my, you know, in my elderly years. So those are like probably the three things that motivate me, me you know, like I want to be, you know, like my heroes, you know, I was inspired by them. I want, you know, recognition. I want, um, I want to chase that achievement. I want to, you know, have something to show for it. I want to put some money in the bank too, you know, like that doesn't, that never hurts, you know? Yeah. And then, uh, and then, yeah, just all those things together, all those things together, I would say definitely, uh, definitely inspire me to fight. Definitely. You know, why should we believe you're the next big thing in MMA? From a MMA reporter standpoint here, yeah. why should we believe do you have the, obviously, you look at the guys like Conor McGregor and all those guys that yeah. can talk, swag, they dress well, speak well, fight yeah. well, obviously. The skills in the octagon is what's going to be the ones that get you the money. What, yeah. what is it, why do you think you are the next big thing? I think because you know, I'm one, I'm a young kid. I'm relatable. I think I have a lot of interests that like, you know, a lot of MMA fans have too. Like I love to play video games. I love to read books. I love to watch, you know, like Star Wars movies and like just random shit like that. I like to, uh, I think one, I'm relatable Two, you know, I do, I have the, I have the talk, I have the dress, you know, like I don't, uh, I think a lot of MMA fighters, you know, they're kind of lacking that, like they're just straight athletes. But if you want to become a superstar, you have to dress like one, you have to, you know, treat yourself like one. You have to, you know, do these interviews. You have to really sell yourself, you know, like fighting is so much more than just a sport nowadays. It's also entertainment. So, you know, I realize that and, you know, I try to do my best to market myself, you know, and try to, you know, stay up with like my brand awareness and whatnot. But I would say I'm the next big thing because I have the style. I have the appearance. You know, I have I have what it takes. And I know that. No, I definitely understand that. You gotta, you gotta have the whole package here in MMA, especially if you want to be a, a star and get paid, like guys like Mayweather or Connor. I mean, obviously Floyd's in boxing, and yeah. you know, so he can come back and get big fights whenever he wants. People call him out every single day, so even yeah. they call Connor McGregor all the time. It's just having that name where everyone wants to call you out, and that's got to be a good feeling for sure. But yeah. outside of fighting, what do you specifically like to do? I know you said you have a daughter, you have your girlfriend yeah. as well too. You're talking. Yeah. I'm assuming you, want, you like spending time with them, of course. Uh, oh, what, yeah, what, like this whole quarantine, uh, yeah. What about, what do you do outside of fighting? Outside of fighting, I love to read books. Like, that's one of the biggest things I picked up. Like, I, I really ramped that up, like, in 2020, I would say. Like, I made a goal to, like, read, try to read, like, a new book, like, every every month or every few months or so. I love to read. I love to, you know, watch new TV shows. I just finished watching uh, Ozark on Netflix. I started on season one. And I finished all three seasons within like maybe like a, like a month or so. I love to play video games. I'm a PC gamer right now. Um, I play mainly like Dota, which is like a strategy. It's like a strategy game, but you're controlling one person the whole time. The games are like 45 minutes long, but it's not a great game for your mental health, I would say, because, you know, it makes you really angry at your teammates. And uh, yeah, sometimes it just it just leaves you in a bad mood and you lose a, an hour long match. You know what I mean? <laughs> so pissed. It's like a war zone. Game. Oh, yeah. dude, you lose, like, you're so close, and you play 10th, and that's, like, an hour, hour and a half. You just wasted, and you're like, damn, dude, come the on. Closer, <laughs> the closer you get to first place, but then losing just makes a sting that much more. When you drop yeah. into a Warzone game and you die right away, you're like, okay, whatever. I'm in the gulag. I get a second chance. And then when you yeah. die again, you're like, okay, you know what? I'm going to search for another match. But when you survive to that last 10, that's when it really hurts because you're like, man, I was there. I smelled the finish, and it wasn't there. <laughs> I agree. No, definitely. That's that's one thing. I don't think I'll ever get sick of video games. As, no, uh, I won't. I'm 23, but I don't think I'll ever get sick of it. It's too too much fun. It's relaxing unless uh, you're starting to get killed too much. But <laughs> in Call of Absolutely, Duty, absolutely no. I've been playing. Best. I've been playing video games since I was, man. I think the first the first like console game I really picked up was Halo, and that was back in 2001. I was four years old. My dad brought home the first Xbox. I didn't even know what it was because before that I had a Super Nintendo. He brought it home. And then I, <laughs> this is why Halo is my favorite games. But I remember he sat me down and he's like, hey, listen, son, like, you know, this is, this is a, this is a rated M game. I don't know if you know what that means, but that means that you have to be 17 to play this game and you're four years old. He's like, if I hear you repeating any of this stuff, if I hear you saying on any of these words, these guys say on this game, like you're never playing it again. So if you're going to play it, you're not going to repeat anything they say or do. 
and I was like, okay, that sounds good. And yeah, so I'm a big Halo fan too. That's one of the main like console games I played throughout the years. So I'm waiting for Halo Infinite to come out. Hopefully it comes out this year. That's the only reason I would get an Xbox Series X, to be honest. <laughs> Gotta get that and we can play it, dude, because I'll definitely get that game as well. Sounds good, bro. Add my gamer tag. L I U L I U F U Lu Fu. It's like Kung Fu, but it's mine. It's Lu Fu. <laughs> that's that's pretty dope. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> Well, man, I do appreciate you jumping on here with me. It's it's always been good. It's good talking to you as well, too. And I can't Great see what you as well, bro. Yeah. have in the future, guys, in the future for you, man. And, uh, you know, if you want to go ahead and shout out any sponsors, man, the floor is yours. Yeah, I want to shout out uh, Versus Enigma. They sent me the shirt. They're a clothing company. They make great stuff. I love their clothing pieces. And then, you know, shout out to my boys that, you know, came up out, you know, the Sacramento Trap House with me, you know, like living in the fighter house together. Shout out Brady McDonald. Shout out, you know, Nick Lappy. Those are some big up and comers. I definitely want to put them on your radar. Brady McDonald, big up and coming uh, amateur fighter from Nova Scotia. He is a great, great jujitsu artist. Lots of leg leg locks. He's like he's like a like a mini Nate Diaz with leg locks, you know. And then my friend uh, Nick Lappy as well. You know, he's he's looking to make his pro debut soon. I mean, he's got the look. I mean, he's like a he's like a dark Sage Northcutt. Like imagine Sage Northcutt with tattoos. You know, maybe not as big, but with tattoos, you know, like he's he's the next superstar as well. I mean, all three of us were coming up together, you know. That's what's up, man. Well, like I said again, I really do appreciate you jumping on today. And uh, this is Matthew Putterman signing out with MyMMANews.com. Make sure you guys check out these interviews, especially this one with Audi with Austin now. You guys have a great rest of the day and God bless. All right. Thank you.